Hi everyone and welcome back to The Hair Loss Show. My name is Dr. Vikram J. Aprikash. Thanks again for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe uh, to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to talk about immunity to finasteride. So stick around and we'll cover that topic. Welcome to The Hair Loss Show. Dr. Russell Knudsen and Dr. Vikram J. Aprikash discuss issues relating to hair loss and the medical and surgical treatment of hair loss in both men and women. All right, so one of the questions that uh, has been asked on the channel on quite a few occasions is, do you develop an immunity to finasteride? And I think the short answer is, is probably no. There's no such thing as immunity to uh, finasteride per se. But if we look at finasteride and uh, understand how it works, first of all, and what the implications of the use of finasteride actually are. So finasteride, as we know, and we've covered that on a number of different episodes, but we specifically talked about finasteride in its own episode, blocks an enzyme called the 5-alpha reductase enzyme. So if we look at uh, male pattern hair loss or androgenic alopecia, we know that it's, uh, there's a genetic condition, but it results from the conversion of testosterone into dihydrotestosterone. And if you have an elevated level of DHT, it causes the hair to thin out and fall out in a predictable pattern. What finasteride does is it blocks the 5-alpha reductase enzyme and if you block that enzyme you block the conversion of that to that and therefore lower that in the system. So essentially what that you're trying to do is to try and stabilize uh, this condition. But it's not the cure for hair loss and we know that because studies have demonstrated this and we know that if you look at guys taking finasteride as a medication and they take it for one year, one year 89% of men will show stability on, uh, on the medication, on finasteride. At two years the effective uh, rate drops down to 82%. At five years, which is all that we've got figures for, the figure's less impressive, and that's down to 64%. So at five years, you've basically got around about two-thirds of patients that are taking that medication that will be stable. Now you may argue that doesn't sound very impressive, but what it, tell, it tells me is that we haven't got the cure for hair loss. And I don't believe that that's a reflection that you develop immunity, that, that the finasteride was working and now it's stopped working or you need a higher dose of it. I think what it reflects is that there is a another or multiple mechanisms involved in uh, androgenic alopecia. And this is just but one and it stabilizes people to a certain extent, but over time that, stabi you know, that stability wears down because there are other factors at play. So I don't believe that you uh, develop an immunity to it. That said, I have had many patients who have been on finasteride for many years, for up to 20 years, and are still rock solid, stable on the medication. So it's certainly something worthwhile taking if you've been diagnosed appropriately uh, and it, the medication is appropriate for you. But understand that it is the goal is to stabilize the condition and you have to monitor it and see how it progresses because over time you may lose uh, effectiveness. I hope that answers uh, those questions. Please keep those questions coming and uh, thanks again for watching and see you on the next episode. Take care.